I, female 30, don't have the best relationship with my husband's mom. From day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do and sometimes even copying me. Like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple, just like me. And when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off work to visit some places out of the country. Tourism, in other words. The thing is, I was the one who saved up for and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. Unfortunately, my husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk me into letting her come, and even threatened to call the police and make up some complaints to get us to stay if she couldn't come. Finally, my husband said we should just take her, but I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum, said he wouldn't go if she couldn't come, and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff, which made him take his words back and say, fine, I will tell her to stop it because we won't take her. Things got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. My husband was walking ahead of me and looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area and the first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me, fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging. That's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him in the harshest way possible. He tried to say I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway, so I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him he and his mom could still go and that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turned out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruin the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was so hard on his mom that it was ridiculous. I refused to fight, but he scolded me. And then he called my family to tell them that the trip was canceled and that it was because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy it. Did I really overreact? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I don't want to call the divorce card yet, but divorce. You set your boundaries and said no. She crossed them and your husband told you he would tell her no. He lied. He tried to pin you in a corner by not saying anything about bringing her anyways and got upset you refused to be a part of his little trap and then to scold you? He's not a good man. He needs to go. It's not as much about if mother-in-law came or not. You told him what you wanted and he agreed, but he didn't. He lied and then expected you to be okay with it to avoid a scene. That's BS. That's not how a husband should behave. And yes, 100%, this is something where you need to consider divorce. And she saved for and planned the trip. Even if he had, the lying and boundary stomping would be unacceptable. But Jesus, sometimes the divorce card needs to come out. And this is one of them. Only part of this I don't agree with. OP should have gone to the ticket booth and gotten her ticket changed for somewhere else and gone to enjoy herself alone. Let husband and his mother have their romantic time together because it sounds like he married his mother. Definitely not the idiot. You know that if you had sucked it up and gone with them, the entire vacation would be all about catering to his mom. Whatever she wanted to do, whatever places she wanted to go, places she wanted to eat, you'd be the third wheel on your vacation. OP, I'd get tired of tripping over his umbilical cord. He's a mommy's boy and she's manipulative and toxic. You have every right to enjoy a holiday with your husband without them behaving like children. You did the right thing. You helped him and his mom have the romantic getaway they wanted. Unfortunately, the next right thing to do is leave. He doesn't respect you. My nearly adult female, parents have been remodeling the house. My dad tore a big chunk in the back and he and my brother, 19, and my sister's husband, 27, have been cleaning and picking up the rubbish that was left. 
It is important to say that I do not like my brother-in-law. He's quite misogynistic, disrespectful, and has no boundaries. I know how badly this speaks of my family, but my brother and father are nothing like that, and they also believe he's wrong. We can only do so much when my sister claims she's happy with this. I try to interact as less as I can with him, and I feel uncomfortable in his presence because, until a few years ago, he used to make fun of me for anything I did. He's also used to having my sister or mom do things for him, like cooking, serving him his own plate, laundry, child caring, etc. That being said, my father and my brother-in-law usually leave at the same hour to work. My dad works in construction and my brother-in-law at a company. I've been making my dad's lunch for two years now since I got a liking for cooking. I cook dinner for all of us and I only pack some for him. For example, I made enchiladas during this instance, so I packed him a few with a side of lettuce, sour cream, and green salsa in small containers, a bag of chips, and a few chunks of sliced fruit, apple and pear. I also pack him water and coke. When they came to the kitchen with my mom, I told my dad that his lunch was already in his car so he could eat something and leave without worrying. And my brother-in-law said, what about me? So I just shrugged my shoulders and said, that I left him a container on the island and he was more than welcome to pack his stuff and there were waters and cokes in the fridge. He gave me a dirty look and asked why I didn't do it for him. And I said, you're not my dad, so... My mom got in the middle and told me to start packing my brother-in-law's lunch and he smirked when she said that. I just sat with my plate and said no, that he could pack his own lunch or buy something at his job. My mom said I was embarrassing her but my dad cut it off and told my brother-in-law to stop fighting and pack his stuff because I already cooked for all of us. Brother-in-law said he would eat something at work and left early. My mom tried to scold me, but my dad cut her off and said that my brother-in-law was already an adult. She said, but she packs your lunch. And my dad said, yeah, but I don't demand it. When he left, my mom called me an idiot and said she raised me better. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your brother-in-law is a tool. Why would you demand a teen or anyone to pack your lunch, especially when he treats you like crap? Your mom and your sister are enabling his disgusting behavior. 100 points to your dad for defending you. Next time mom says she raised you better, reply with, no, dad raised me better. He taught me self-respect. Why doesn't your sister pack him a lunch? Your brother-in-law is a huge idiot, and I like that your dad sees it too. He's a good dad for having your back. So why is your mother enabling this behavior? I understand why your sister's putting up with it. She married into that trash, but your mother should not be luring you to his standards of living. Your mom can pack his lunch if she wants to so badly. And that's sweet you pack your dad's lunch. When I did things like that, my dad politely thanked me. Then he told my mom what a great daughter I was and they were the best lunches. Gosh, I miss that man. OP, don't let your mom rope you into this nonsense. You don't owe brother-in-law any lunch packing or anything else in your house. He can do it himself or get the wife who puts up with him to wait on him. To cut a long story short, my sister had an affair with my married brother-in-law, resulting in my nephew. Nobody from my husband's family has anything to do with my sister or her son, except for my husband, who has met his nephew a few times. My brother-in-law's wife knows, but none of their children do. My son's birthday was last weekend, and we had a party for him. My nephew's a toddler now and very close to my son, a year older, so I decided to invite him. I told my sister she couldn't stay because that wouldn't be fair to my sister-in-law, but it would be nice for my nephew to come still. She agreed because I know deep down it hurts that my brother-in-law or his family won't even acknowledge or meet her son. I knew this wouldn't be a popular decision, and while I don't regret it, I wonder if I was the idiot. My brother-in-law avoided his son like the plague. He was so angry with me that my husband made him leave after calling me a witch. My father-in-law asked me what game I was playing and accused me of stirring up old trouble again for no reason. My sister-in-law was upset too, so she left with my brother-in-law and their kids. My husband was also furious at me and said I had no right to invite him and that our son's birthday wasn't the time and place for this. I don't think it's fair to keep excluding my nephew 
as he doesn't have any other family and our son is close to him. So having him at the party also made our son happy. Am I the idiot? Wait, wait, I just wanted to make sure. Your cheating brother-in-law is invited to everything, but your sister's not? Your family's royally messed up, and you are, if not a total idiot, then at least an idiot for inviting your brother-in-law to this shindig, but not your sister. Your sister's behavior was bad, sure, but she wasn't the one who broke her marriage vows. That was your brother-in-law. This misogynistic blame the woman for everything, never apportioned blame to the guy attitude drives me nuts. I don't invite my brother-in-law. My husband does because he's part of a package deal with his wife and kids, and my husband refuses to punish them for his brother's bad behavior. And then on top of that, my sister didn't do anything to prevent the pregnancy. Why in the world are they acting like your brother-in-law did nothing wrong? He slept with your sister, and she didn't make the baby on her own. Yet it's okay for his entire family to punish your nephew because his brother couldn't keep his trousers on around a woman that was not his wife? Holy hypocrite, Batman. Seriously, though, the hypocrisy is mind-blowing. Are you okay punishing your sister? And then on top of that, she didn't do anything to prevent a pregnancy. I'm sorry, but have we magically traveled to a universe where a man's part is no longer necessary for procreation? No? Then I'm sure you misspelled the word they. He's also responsible for protection. Everyone's the idiot here, but 95% your husband and his family, 5% you. They suck for obvious reasons. This isn't your nephew's fault. He's a child, and whether anyone likes it, he's part of the family. Remind them that the scarlet letter goes on the adulterer, not the child. You suck too, because you should have told everyone that you were inviting him, and why? Not to spare the adulterer's tender, widow feelings, but to prevent a scene where your nephew was exposed to any toxicity from his father's family, who are low rent enough to blame your brother-in-law's infidelity on a child. My 25 male, Childhood best friend, 25 male, proposed to his girlfriend, 24, of five years last month. My girlfriend, 25, and I have been together for seven years, but we are not engaged yet, and I don't think we're ready to take that next step just yet. I am very happy for my best friend, but since then, my girlfriend has not shut up about it. She complains about how people who've been together five years moved on and got engaged sooner than us, and how I still have her waiting. You may ask why I'm not proposing. I adore my girlfriend and I indeed see a future with her. We have a great relationship and we have similar goals and aspirations, but I'm the guy who simply wants to live in the moment. I don't wanna give her a ring just for the sake of it. I wanna do it with the most excitement and happiness possible. And I'm not in that mindset yet. I don't think any of us two are ready. I still must finish my degree and engagement and marriage are not something I want yet. I might change my mind anytime though. I just don't like the pressure that it has to happen. So on Sunday, we were at a barbecue party and my best friend with his fiance were there. My girlfriend started asking them how they felt ready and what kind of life plans they had, etc. She kept asking questions to the point I felt she was being invasive. I told her that she should stop and she was making them uncomfortable. Then my friend's fiancé got defensive and told me that it was fine that she was asking those questions and nobody was offended besides me. I said that regardless of how they feel, my girlfriend is invasive and she's asking those questions to pressure me into proposing and moving in with her. Then my friend's fiancé blatantly told me that if I learned how to communicate and consider my girlfriend's feelings, she wouldn't have to ask those questions to feel some kind of comfort. My best friend agreed with his fiance and my girlfriend. They said I was being an idiot and that I owe my girlfriend an apology for my immature behavior and lack of communication. You are the idiot. Just say you're afraid of commitment and only want things on your terms and go. Be honest with your girlfriend. You have no idea when anytime soon you want to marry. She does. That is a discussion that needs to be had. Learn to communicate. Also, it's perfectly fine not to want marriage or kids, but it's your partner's right to want them. It's best to be honest. Yeah, OP, this just sounds like normal small talk when someone has a big, exciting life event, you ask them about it. 
You should apologize to your girlfriend for trying to censor her questions. Your friends sound perfectly capable of shutting it down if they didn't want to answer. But it would be best if you were honest with your girlfriend that you aren't there with her so she can decide whether she wants to continue waiting for you. Seven years? Man, do yourself a favor and break up with her. You have obvious commitment issues you need to work out. Also, you're projecting your own feelings about marriage with your girlfriend on everyone else, and you're taking it out on them too. Since my neighbor had her baby, I've made an effort to be more considerate of noise. Despite already soundproofing my rumpus room, I've stopped playing my drums after 6 p.m. I've also declined to host friends outside in my backyard due to noise. I think I've been more than considerate, but apparently not. I get home from work at 11 p.m. and put my car in the garage. A couple of weeks ago, my neighbor approached me and asked if I could wait until the morning to put my car away. But I declined, as there have been break-ins to cars on our street lately. My car is also a type targeted by thieves, as parts are expensive, and it's an enthusiast car. I apologized but was firm when telling her that I will not, under any circumstances, leave my car out overnight. I also know they sleep with their window open that faces my garage, and I thought it would be weird to bring it up and suggest they close the window. I'm also confused, as I have an aftermarket exhaust on the car, louder than the original, but they have nothing to say about it. A couple of nights ago, I came home to her husband's car blocking my driveway, just enough that I couldn't get my car through. It was useless, because I pushed the button before I reached my driveway, so it beeped anyway. They didn't come out, so I had their car towed, and they haven't done it since. Today, I decided to play my drums in my soundproof rumpus room around lunchtime. You can only hear minimal vibration from the kick from the outside, but it's at the rear of my property and quite far from any neighbors, but they still had something to say. The wife came over and said she had put up with my noise long enough and that she was exhausted due to the kid never sleeping, thanks to the noise I make. I was definitely still miffed about the driveway blocking situation from the other night. I snapped a little, telling her that I'd been considerate enough and already made concessions in terms of noise. I said that while it's within my right to play music up until 10 p.m. in our council, I've cut myself off at 6 p.m. in consideration of her and her kid. I said that from now on, she'd have to get over it because I was done catering to her and her family. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You've been very reasonable, and you're allowed to live your life. They chose to have the baby. Surely they knew things might wake it up. And you're not supposed to keep things dead silent for the baby sleeping. They need to get used to a normal level of noise when sleeping. Not that it's a good excuse, but she probably is exhausted. And this is one of those need someone to blame kind of things. She's perhaps fixated on you and your noise because it's something that's right next door and something she can directly attack in a manner of speaking. It sounds as if she's unlucky enough to have one of those babies who just doesn't sleep much. That's not your fault, though. I feel like even if OP went out of town for a week, the baby would still wake up. It's what babies do. I would suggest that you start living your life again, dude. Have people over. Play your drums during the allowed hours. Park your car in the garage and talk to her husband. She's probably sleep-deprived and she's blaming you because she needs a scapegoat.